Hi, everybody. Before we get to another great interview, we could really use your help. IMDB, which is the entertainment database, recently named the Two Opinionated Podcast one of its top 100 podcasts. This is a monumental feat for this program. You know, we're a father and son team out of a small town in West Virginia, have been doing this for about five years. There's 15 million podcasts out there. About 40,000 of those get to the point that they're listed on IMDb. Out of those 40,000 out of the 15 million, we are ranked number 82. Something that we're just immensely proud of. We're so thankful for our listeners, our watchers, our fans. Thank you so, so much. If you would like to help us out and we're asking for it, please. Um, it's easy. It's real, it, it's really easy. It's free. If you go to IMDB, that's IMDB.com, look up two opinionated podcasts and just take a look at the page. That's all you have to do. I mean, you're welcome to look at the cast, look at the episodes so you can kind of see who's been on the program. Do whatever you want, but even just bringing up the page, imdb.com, Two Opinionated Podcast, bring up the page, look at it. That helps us so much. So please, if you can do anything, we would really appreciate that. Um, our YouTube channel is MeisterCon Pod. Love to have your subscription there. It's also free. And you can also check out our website, MeisterCon.com, where you'll find almost 700 episodes, audio and video, available on there. There's also a terrific blog from Brett, and it'll let you know anything that we have going on in studio, if we're covering a convention, if we're going on location, anything that we have going on will be on the website, MeisterCon.com. Thank you guys so, so much. We appreciate you so much much. I, I can't express enough how appreciative we are of all of you. We never, never expected to, to do as well as, as we have, and that's all because of you. Thank you so much. Enjoy that interview. Bye, everybody. Hi, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Two Opinionated. I'm so excited today. I've got the official archivist for Bob Hope, Jim Hardy. Welcome, Jim. Thank you, Mike. Glad to be with you. You know, I was really excited for this one. Yeah, I, I grew up, as as a lot of us uh, around my age did, um, you know, watching Bob Hope and Bing Crosby and uh, George, uh, George Burns and all of those guys. And it was just the best time. And it dawned on me while I was kind of prepping for this interview, we don't really have those type of entertainers anymore. Yeah, I would agree with that. It's, uh, you know, the entertainment landscape has changed so much. There's so many conduits now uh, for people to get the, their person personality out there. Yeah, uh, I think it's a lot easier to become a star now than it, than it was in the old days. And I yeah. think uh, because of that, I suspect that maybe there's not as much appreciation for uh, the achievement. You know, uh, yeah. maybe a little more of a sense of entitlement. What I always found with Bob and and, and the people of that generation is uh, they had a great appreciation for their life and what they were able to yeah. accomplish and what they were able to do because of their celebrity. Yeah, and and obviously they used that celebrity for positive reasons. You know, all of those trips over uh, supporting the troops and stuff. I think Bob was at the at the forefront of all of that. Um, you know, that was something he didn't have to do. He was still a star. He didn't need to do that, but he took the time for decades to do that. Yeah, yeah. At, yeah, at the time when he first started to go uh, early on in World War II, I mean, he was he was a big box office draw. Yeah. He was a major star. And, uh, you know, travel at that time was not like it is today. It was hard to get places, you know, especially, <laughs> you know, island hopping in the South Pacific. Uh, that was a dangerous hobby to undertake. You know, there was a lot of things that could go wrong. And, uh, you know, I mean, he just, you know, felt him and his troop, Francis Langford, went on all the tours and Jerry Colonna. You know, I mean, they just felt like it was it was worth it. It was something that they really wanted to do and needed to do. And I think they were right. Yeah, I agree. I completely agree with that. I've been re-watching uh, MASH 
you know, which uh, kind of they have those episodes where they have the uh, the entertainers come over, you know, to yes. perform and stuff. And uh, and that's a TV show, but that's kind of what it was like. I mean, when when those uh, individuals came overseas, that was an exciting time because they didn't get a ton of entertainment at that time. Yeah, that's right. It was hard to get entertainment over there. And yep. uh, interestingly, uh, Larry Gelbart, who created MASH for TV, was a writer for Bob. Really? And went on all the trips to Korea. So he had a little inside knowledge on, on what it was like to you yeah. know, to do those shows. Yeah, that's that's really interesting because those shows, they're so well written. Like it's 50 years since that show was on and it still holds up pretty well. Not 100%, but pretty close for a show that old because the writing's so strong. Yeah, yeah. The writing was really good. A little yeah. insider trading on his part there. Yeah. <laughs> We don't really have the uh, variety shows like we used to. And that's one thing that that I really miss. I love those uh, growing up. That was such a big part of the entertainment world. And we don't really have that anymore. No, those those kind of went by the wayside. Uh, well, I guess by the end of the 80s, they were all gone. You know, they, yeah. they never, there were so many of them there for a while. Well, I remember uh, Donnie and Marie, you know, had their variety show on for years. But yeah, by the end of the 80s, it was gone. And there was a, there was a bunch of them at that time, and you know Bob with his shows, they were kind of that type of show. You know, you didn't just get comedy; you got all kinds of stuff when you went to those shows. Yeah, that was the format that the uh, you know I mean that was vaudeville. Yeah, really. You know, I mean he spent a lot of years in vaudeville. Yeah, and that was kind of the vaudeville format. You had a little bit of everything. Uh, you know, I mean what you didn't get on a Bob Hope show that you would get in vaudeville was. Uh, you know, some of the novelty acts and you wouldn't get drama, you know, but <laughs> I bet that, you, know, you did have, you had song, you had dance, you had comedy, you had, uh, uh, you know, we had, we had some animal acts on once in a while. Yeah, <laughs> yeah a little uh, bit of everything. Yeah, that was a format that he was very familiar with. He, I mean, it translated well to radio and he translated it to television and it worked. Yeah, I was trying to think if we had any, um, entertainers today that that come anywhere close to that i couldn't really come up with too many i thought maybe someone like a, a steve martin or a martin short maybe you know that at times have done some of the vaudeville stuff it's just not um uh, as consistent as yeah. back in the day but that's the best i could come up with any do you have any names that somewhat kind of match those uh stars of old well, I think, uh, I, you know, I haven't seen Steve Martin dance, so I don't know if he can <laughs> dance, but he certainly can, he certainly can play music. He can do magic. Yeah. He can, you know, he's, he's very funny. He can do drama. We've seen him do that. But, uh, you know, it, you know, in those days, Mike, you had to know how to do a little bit of everything. That was part of being right. in show business. Um, if you were going to work and work with some regularity, you needed to be able to, to be plug and play in a lot of different situations. And you don't have to do that anymore. You know, That's you right. One trick to pony today and have a very good and long career. So yeah. I guess it's not required anymore. Yeah. Now, if if your main talent is acting and that's all you do, that's fine. Yes. You'll do well. <laughs> yeah. Nobody's asking you to come out and, and sing or that's right. <laughs> do a duet or dance or anything. You know, they don't we don't even do the like uh, circus with the stars anymore. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. That's when you would see some of that stuff. See, now you're going back to the 80s again. That's right. That's right. It's a great decade. <laughs> a great decade for entertainment. Yes. Um, and let's talk a little about you, Jim. You know, tell me a little bit about, you know, what were your kind of goals growing up? Did you desire to be in the entertainment business or did you kind of just fall into it? No, it was something that always uh, attracted me since I was, you know, probably nine or ten years old you know some of the kids in the neighborhood one of the one of the fellows had a a little super eight camera oh yeah and uh you know we used to make little movies all the time and we would make monsters out of clay and animate them and we would do little scenes and uh you know so from from very early on i was very interested in that you know and i was you know yeah movie director or something one day but I always had an interest to be in that and that's what I studied at school in Oklahoma so when I had an opportunity uh, to get a job out here with with Bob 
and I'd, I'd come out here already, you know, to try right. to find my way. And uh, I was a summer replacement, uh, actually, for a, a fellow that was a, a PA on the show. And uh, he had to or wanted to take the summer off for some reason. And I was his replacement for the summer because I had some background and training yeah. uh, in television production. You know, they knew at least I could. Have you um have you ever run into that gentleman since? And uh, by the end of the summer, you know, I have not. I don't know what happened to him. Yeah, I don't know if he decided he wasn't coming back or if they decided he wasn't coming back. But they offered me the job permanent at the end of the summer. I said, "Heck yeah, sign me up." Did they know at the time that they were never going to get rid of you? No, they didn't. <laughs> they, you know, they they might have uh, reconsidered had they known. <laughs> What was I it like? Uh, what was it like that first time you get hired? What was that like that first time you met Bob? Uh, very surreal because uh, you know, I mean, he was one of the probably one of the ten most famous faces on the planet. You know, I mean, really, if you think about it. And uh, the Bob Hope Show was always on in my house when I was growing up. My parents were big fans. And he'd be on once a month, you know, and it was always on. And so, you know, I was meeting someone of legendary status. Yeah. And the first time I got called over to the house, you don't know what to expect. You don't know <laughs> what, what kind of person he's going to be. And he couldn't have been nicer. He was just, he was just such a regular guy. and always was. I mean, that's just who he was. Um, he didn't hold himself to be above anybody else, to be better than anybody else. He appreciated whatever expertise anybody else brought to the table. And he was interested. He was collaborative. And, uh, you know, I couldn't have had a better situation because, uh, you know, you always hear about, you know, some stars that can be really hard to get along right. with. And, hold and he, he was the absolute opposite. It was a, it was a great relief for me. And every time I'd get called over there, I couldn't wait to go. It was fun. Yeah. That's, a, that's amazing. It doesn't really surprise me. Because someone that gave that much of their time, you know, to do those overseas tours, um, you would expect to to be pretty, pretty centered and down to earth and 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 kind of uh, friendly and open to to people. Yeah. It's just surprising because he was such a big star. You would expect him to be more aloof. Right. Yeah, I think that's. Uh... I think that was a little bit of the expectation, and I was happily uh, relieved that. Uh... He couldn't have been more chummy. Yeah. <laughs> if that's a word anymore. Yeah, that's a good word. Yeah. 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 We don't use that one uh, enough, but it everybody knows what that means when you say chummy. Yeah. That's you're like, that's a good person. Yeah. We hang out. Yeah. <laughs> How did your position evolve over time to the point where you become the archivist? Longevity. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I, Mike, I outlived everybody who knew more than I did. Yeah. So, you know, I became the uh, keeper of the flame. When you're around this material for as long as I was, you know, I mean, you assimilate it and you remember things. And, you know, we would do retrospective shows once in a while and you would go back through all of the, uh, the old material and uh, mine out some of the gems and cobble them together and make a show out of them. So, you know, I had an opportunity to see everything after, you know, some amount of time I'd seen everything. And I remembered, you know, who did what and when and, and so forth. And, you know, I certainly worked to, to my advantage because, uh, you know, the other people that knew the same thing that I did, they were a lot older than I was. Yeah. And uh, they retired, you know, or, or worse. And, uh, you know, I'm kind of the last man standing. Do you have an apprentice? No, I don't. Yeah, that's kind of scary. No. We got to take care of you. <laughs> what, 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 have you heard something? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't volunteering either. That, that sounds like a lot. <laughs> no. Well, I, I, you know, I know that I'm sure people have thought about it. And, uh, you know, I don't know how in, anybody would would assimilate all of the content that's available to them uh, if they had to do it in a short amount of time. I don't know how you would do it. You know, because we have, a, you know, a thousand plus hours of uh, amazing of stuff. And, uh, you know, I had 38 years to, you know, to, to see it and remember it. I don't know how a person would do it in a short amount of time. I, that's a daunting task.
Yeah. Yeah, that's daunting. I, I'd had the uh, archivist for uh, Lucille Ball on a few years back. Same type of situation. That's uh, He was saying the same thing. He's like, I, I don't know, you know, down the road who would take it over because it it would take so long to familiarize yourself with everything. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so let's talk about the YouTube channel because I, I love it. I, I've been on it. Uh, uh, well, I was on it all weekend, kind of just playing around and, and watching stuff. I, I saw the uh, I hadn't seen it in years, but the clip with uh, Olivia Newton, John, it was like a Star Wars parody. Oh, yeah. The Mark Hamill. Yeah, I hadn't seen that probably since it was originally on. <laughs> Yeah, and, and that's, uh, you know, I guess that's part of the appeal. You know, I mean, we have all of this this uh, material that's just been kind of sitting dormant for years. And, uh, you know, with streaming now, you know, I mean, there's a great new opportunity. And so an outfit called Spot a Dog that kind of does this thing, you know, and this is what they do. They approached us and said, you know, let's do something with your library. We go, well, yeah, let's, what, you know, why not? Bob would have embraced this wholeheartedly yeah you know he embraced any new technology tv was new once and he was you know he was all in so you know hopefully people will jump on google and and you know search for a youtube bob hope channel and they'll find us and uh you know folks that have been fans of bob for decades are going to see some things that they remember and 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 love and they're going to see a lot of stuff that they have forgotten or didn't see the first time and if you didn't see it the first time, you didn't see it because it wasn't, uh, you know, there were no reruns. No, that's right. <laughs> so a lot of this stuff's going to be brand new, even to old timers. And, and for young people, we really hope that we're going to get some new eyeballs on Bob and so they can discover why it was great and why he was important. Well, it's it'd be a shame, really, to have all of that great material just sitting. You know, yeah. it needs to be shared. With people, and that's exactly why. So, so that the younger generation can see some of this great, uh, especially the comedy. You know, that's yeah. it's a lot of people just haven't been exposed to that. Yeah, yeah. and it's it, it's well set up. I, I like the way you're uh, kind of dropping stuff on there. Did you have a, you know, when you were setting it up originally, did you know there were certain things that you wanted on there to begin with, or is it, or there's, is there just so much that you're just putting it on as you can? Well, there there is so much, but I, I certainly have my personal favorites. But it would take, uh, it, you know, it'll take years even to just put all my personal favorites <laughs> up. There's, there's, there's yeah. so much material. Sometimes we try to put something up that's a little bit timely. You know, like you know, May the Fourth is kind of a, a Star Wars thing. May the Fourth be with you. So that was a, a good time to put up the the Star Wars spoof, and everybody loves Mark Hamill. Of course. And, you know, I mean, that thing's getting a ton of things, you know. And we put up some stuff with Arnold Palmer because it's, it's PGA Championship Week. And, you know, I was just there. I, mean, I took just... uh, I took my dad to the uh, opening round. It's uh, in Louisville. Uh, we had a great time with that. Yeah. I kind of figured that's why you were putting some of the Palmer stuff up. Yeah, some of it, you know, we just try and, you know, be a little bit timely with something that's, that's going on. But, you know, otherwise, you know, I mean, it, we try to put up, well, we're putting stuff up at least twice a week. So there's always something new. We, we put up the Jackson 5 uh, a week or oh, two ago. I saw that, yeah. Michael Jackson, 15 years old. And, you know, a lot of people don't remember what he looked like in those days or sounded like. And, I mean, it's just, we got a lot of great performances like that, you know, above and beyond just the comedy. Yeah. You know, and all the biggest stars of the time. And, uh, you know, so there's great musical performances. You're going to see a lot of... Uh, a lot of stars doing things you're not accustomed to seeing, which, you know, like I said, singing and dancing, you know. Yeah. And, you know. It's pretty great. I I, I, I love uh, that you got that uh, out there. And it's, it's very, like some sites, I've seen people put up kind of archive sites before, and it's, they're not very easy to navigate. You struggle yeah. a little bit. But your YouTube channel, it's right there. You see everything you want, you just click. That's it's yeah, it's really well done. And I love the fact that you uh that that you're starting to put that out there. You know, good for you. It's probably something that should have been done a while back. Yeah, probably so. Although, you know, I mean to be honest, we we wouldn't have known how to do it. <laughs> so, <laughs> so you know, we we partnered up with people who do know how to do it right. and, and they know they know the secrets to you know to keeping it fresh. 
you know, that's the thing. It's always fresh. And what it, what we put up yesterday or last week or last month will always be there. So yeah. it's not like these things rotate out. The uh, library of content that anybody's going to see, is it just grows and grows and grows. So yeah. there's always something new to see. But all, everything we put up, you know, before, it'll always be there. So there's going to be, a, you can you can get on there and you can end up spending a whole day there if you're not, if you're not careful. Either. Oh, I can tell you that. I got stuck there for a couple hours and yeah. I had to force myself to walk away. It was yeah, yeah. pretty great. It was pretty great. Yeah. Did, you're, you're the guys you, we're going after. Go ahead, sir. Yeah, no, you, you're our favorite kind of a visitor, Mike. The, the one that sticks around. <laughs> yeah, come and don't leave. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I could have. I had to force myself to walk away because I was having a blast. Everything yeah. on there is just fun. You know, some of it was familiar. Some of it I found that I hadn't seen before, or at least didn't remember. So yeah. it was like watching for the uh, first time. And it, Bob, one of the things I think that the reasons he was so popular is that he was so recognizable. Everybody knew who Bob Hope was. Yeah. Even if they weren't a fan, they knew who he was. And and there's still a lot of that today. You know, maybe the younger generation doesn't doesn't realize yet. Uh, but most of us that were around when Bob was here, we, you know, he's very recognizable. Yeah. Yeah. The only places that we went where nobody knew who he was was at that time, uh, the Soviet Russia. Right. Red China. Yeah. And, you know, they'd never heard of them. The, the, the only two places on the planet. And we went to a lot of places. Everybody <laughs> knew his face, at least, you know. <laughs> if you know, I mean, yeah. he, was, he was incredibly famous. Yeah, he was. He was. Um, you did a lot of those shows uh, with Bob. You know, what was your kind of role uh, for those shows? You know, and I'm assuming it evolved over time. But what did you do for the shows? Uh, it, you know, it's a... Uh, it, a, an assistant to the producer, an assistant to the associate producer. You know, we had a, a wonderful associate producer who had done all the shows in NBC, you know, since 1950. Wow. And when this fellow finally retired from NBC, I mean, Bob brought him over right away, made him an offer he couldn't refuse, I guess. And, and he kept doing the shows and he was just, he was a, a master scheduler. I mean, he just knew everything, you know, about getting a show done, you know. The nuts and bolts of it and then we had a creative producer and you know my job is to just pitch in and help out you know it's in any way that i that i can you know and uh you know i got to travel to a lot of places meet a lot of people that i never thought that i would have met never would have dreamed about and uh you know i mean you, you couldn't have asked for a, a, a luckier set of circumstances yeah. to fall into that job you know I mean, in, did you have any sense of that when when you took the job? I mean, maybe at the end of summer when when they gave it to you full time, did you know what was coming? Because that's kind of an amazing job. That's a job that a lot of us would like to have had. Yeah, I I, I didn't. I really didn't, Mike. I didn't have an anticipation for what it was going to be. But you know, I mean, as a as an example, you know, I like a lot of. Uh, teenage boys, you know, <laughs> drooled over Barbara Eden, and eight years later, there she is. Wow. So, I mean, it's like, you know, and I met uh, in, in one show, we had George Burns, Danny Thomas, and Milton Berle all on one show. Right? You know, Amazing. I met them all. Say, Legends, these yeah. guys, but Lucy. And the thing about it, like I said, from that era, they were all just the nicest, friendliest people. They joked with everybody. They talked to everybody. Didn't matter what your role was in, in the crew or otherwise. You know, they were very friendly. They didn't. You know, it's not like today where somebody will, you know, will tell you in advance, don't look them in the eye. Or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> you know, they, you know, I mean, they they wanted to know about you. They yeah. wanted to joke with you. And, you know, I, you know, it was just a a different time and i know that there are still people like that you know george clooney is this is apparently a perfect yeah. example of that you know, yeah yeah one of the guys but we you know we've all heard stories about people who are the opposite and uh yeah boy you wouldn't find that from that area they had a genuine appreciation for you know how as the, the word that bob would use lucky they were he considers himself to be incredibly lucky had all the talent in the world but i'm sure there were a lot of talented people that didn't make it that's right he almost didn't make he was an overnight success. You know? No, he struggled for a while, and and it's it, like he was very adaptable. You know, you mentioned technology, but every time something new came up, he was right there. Yeah, yeah, he was he was fearless, and he had thick skin. 
because he was uh, he struggled. You know, he was in vaudeville for for many years. Yeah, before it ever clicked, and he when there were long stretches of time where he couldn't get a job. He was hungry. He was cold, and he was very close to just giving it up and saying it's, it's not happening. Hard. <laughs> What was uh what was Bob like say behind the scenes at one of those shows? You know, was was he was he like uh intense, you know, just focused on the show, or was he pretty relaxed backstage? He was a very relaxed personality, really, yeah. and that was just his nature. You know, I mean he would if you can be relaxed and focused at the same time, you know, I mean you know, in, in a way that you look at certain golf pros, you know, that just yeah. seem to, you know, they just seem to have a smile on their face. All day, but, you know, they're dialed in. Right. You know? And he was very focused on on what he was doing. But, you know, I mean, by the time I met him, he'd been doing it for, for 50 years. You know, or right. Years. Yeah, he'd uh, had a little experience. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think that he he kind of knew what, what he was doing. And, and so he might have had an opportunity to be a little more relaxed than other people earlier in their career. But. You know, I mean, he did the work, though. Yeah. He put on the in the time. He really did. He really did. Did you ever get a chance to golf with Bob? I wasn't a golfer in those days. Yeah. I was not. I, I wish that I had been. He was a uh, an excellent golfer. Yeah. Uh, even at the age that he was when I met him. He was a two handicap at one point in his life. That's amazing. And uh, Arnold Palmer had said that he could have been a professional golfer if he devoted the time to it. He would have had to, you know, stop being an entertainer. You got to pick one or the other. That's but right. he had the talent. You know, he was very good, a very good golfer. Did you work any of the uh, Desert Classics? I didn't work them, but I had an opportunity to be down there for for a lot of them. Yeah. And uh, what a great experience that was. The pro am, uh, certainly in particular, you got to meet an awful lot of people. They had some stars for that pro <laughs> A lot of stars. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't like like today. They we have pro ams, but it's it's not the uh, caliber of star that that we got back in those days. I mean, you had your biggest stars would show up for those. Absolutely, these were yeah, absolutely the biggest stars of the time, real heavy hitters. And, uh, yeah, you know, and and you get to see them just you know they're just having fun now. You know, they, they want to play well, but a lot of them don't. And uh, they don't pretend that they play well. And they're just having fun with it. And, and the pros, you know, also are so relaxed in those pro-am days. You know, they're just out there having a good time. And they don't get an opportunity, I think, to, to play golf and have a good time very often. So they make the most of it. It's a, it's a remarkable atmosphere. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have a, uh, like, a, a favorite you know, Bob moment or memory, something that, uh, you know, when, when you see it, you, you still kind of take a second to watch? Uh, you mean on, from the shows or? Yeah, from the shows. Yeah. Well, some of my favorite, uh, you know, I love the uh, monologue that he does uh, when uh, Elvis gets drafted into the army. And <laughs> we got that up on, on, the, on the YouTube channel already. I think that's that's a classic. You know, it's so funny. That's a, that's a great one. I remember watching clips of that with uh with my mother you know uh when when i was much younger she was a big elvis fan so anytime he did anything we were probably watching but i remember yeah. those and and that was fun seeing those clips again yeah i think that monologue is just so well written so well delivered you know his timing is is perfect oh he always had perfect timing and there are stand-up comedians today hey, that still study bob's timing in fact it's you know he really had it nailed um, well, you know, there's so so much great stuff. One of my favorite, uh, there's a sketch from 1954 that he's got uh, Jack Benny on and Rosemary Clooney, and Bob plays a uh, yeah, New Orleans uh, jazz pianist. It's got a jazz band. Rosie's the singer, and they're going to meet and interview a new uh, fiddle player, Jack Benny, who brings his violin. <laughs> and I'm telling, we don't have this up yet, but we'll get it up. This thing is so funny because they go off script. Bob and, yeah. and Jack start to ad lib and they're just going back and forth and Rosie doesn't know what to say or when to say it. And it's, it's a great study in timing though for anybody who's interested in comedy because they know, these two guys know what they're going to say next, but they're not saying it yet. They're holding it. They're, you can see their eyes going back and forth. They're waiting for the other guy to open his mouth and then they, they bring it up there. The the timing of these two 
it's a great study for anybody who's interested to learn about comic timing. Right. Watch that little that little bit of patter back and forth where they're you know and they're just jumping the next line on the on the on the person, and it's just fun to watch because you know what they're gonna do. they know what they're gonna do, and they're just waiting for the right moment. Right. Yeah, I kind of I kind of love that because uh, comedy it's got a rhythm to it. You know, it's a little bit like music that way. And if if you get the rhythm off a little, it doesn't work. Yeah, absolutely. You're so right. It's all about the timing of it. Yeah. Yeah. How about the uh, Christmas specials? Because that was something that that I always loved. You know, they were still uh, uh, a lot of entertainers had Christmas specials while I was growing up. We've kind of gotten away from those as well. Yeah, we really have, haven't we? That used to be a staple of Christmas. Yeah. You know, like Williams and Perry Como and yeah. Donnie Marie would have a Christmas show. Yeah, those were those were fun shows to do. Um, you know, we, we were fortunate enough to have the Judds on uh, a couple of times for yeah, Christmas yeah. shows. Uh, you know, always get great people to come on the show. They're super fun. Dolly Parton came on and, and she was wonderful. Yeah. Not only was she just a great musician. But, you know, people who remember her being in, in the movies, uh, you know, which she made a few. She's a good actress. Very good and a yeah. wonderful comedian. She really had a great delivery, a great yeah. time. Uh, she was a delight. So, yeah, she's kind of, I think we all have kind of adopted her as a, a national treasure, I think. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. She, what you see is what you get. She is just so genuine. Yeah. Um, one of those desert classics, if I remember right, didn't we have like a group of presidents playing? Boy, did we? Yeah, <laughs> the, the foursome was Bob with uh, Jerry Ford, uh, Bush one, and, and Clinton, who was the sitting president at the time. Amazing. And, uh, you know, they imagine playing golf with three presidents. You know, I mean, most of us can't imagine playing with one. That's right. <laughs> Three presidents at the same time, and uh, you know, and, and to hear uh, George Bush talk about it, they didn't play very well. <laughs> you know, they drew a little blood here and there. <laughs> yeah, it was competitive. Well, I mean, just from the fans, you know, I think uh, George hit a couple of people with. Some <laughs> they weren't. They weren't straight. They played a wide game. <laughs> well, I probably didn't care. Didn't care. They were out to have a good time, and boy, did they! What a great um, event! That's it's a shame that we don't still do that because that. How fun would it be to see some of our leaders out there playing with some of our stars? Yeah, I think it's very therapeutic, and I think you know, I think it's good for the the country. Yeah, to see once in a while that that you know that they've got some sense of humor. You know, these people. You know, I mean, we did a show. Uh, laughing with the presidents, uh, you know, in the middle 90s. And we went and visited a lot of these presidents. And when you see them relaxed, not being presidential anymore, right. uh, George Bush, uh, H. Bush, Bush one, was hysterical. You <laughs> never would have known it from campaign George, President George Bush. He's very but, serious um, on the campaign. He and Barbara, I mean, they were what a hoop they were and she's cracking him up he can't get a line and he's laughing so hard you know and i thought you know it, 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 if you all would show a little bit more of that personality once in a while yeah. you, you probably you know you, you might have been got a lot more votes you know I, I think that's say, true you know sometimes yeah. that uh, uh being just on all the time it can hurt you you know as 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 fans, especially, we yeah. want to see the people we admire, you know, kind of let their hair down, so to speak. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Show, show a little personality, show a little life. It was, it, I mean, it was uh, it was such fun to see them that way. Reagan, of course, was very funny, but he was a polished performer already. He was a better right. the movies, you know, but to see, you know, these other fellows that are outside their, you know, their official title, their official job, fun and funny. To yeah. all to a man, Carter had a great sense of humor, yeah. very very understated, very dry. You know, would sneak up on you. And, you know, you just you just laugh at these folks. Yeah, yeah. What a great time! That's yeah. terrific. I I wanted to ask you. This is off off topic a little bit, but with the um, 
all of the kind of news and uh, that we're getting on AI going and, and being used in uh, in in Hollywood and in, in our movies, TV shows. What do you think about that as far as as our legends go, like Bob? You know, would would do you, would you be in favor of seeing him again on screen, or is that just too, uh, you know, kind of almost a disservice to him? Well, I think the the difficulty is uh, they're going to have him doing uh, because yeah. um, you know he's not in a position now to edit the material. That's right. You know, I mean, you know, he was always in ultimate control of which jokes. You know, he picked all the jokes. You know, he cobbled together all the sketches. You know, so everything that went out over the air, he had blessed. You know, right. he knew what it was. I think it's it's fun, you know, technologically that they can do that. And what are they going to have them do? You know, that now you're on a slippery slope because you don't want to. I mean, there's a lot of like you know unseemly things you could do with this technology that the person himself wouldn't have done. That's right. So, you know, so I think that's the danger of yeah. of that because all of us, I think, would kind of be interested, you know, to see how that would work with uh, uh, some of our. Uh, uh, past stars uh sure. but that's the danger is because you don't want to do anything that would take away from what made them them exactly exactly yeah. And, yeah. you know and, and who decides you know right you know, might be you jim you might have to decide <laughs> Boy, they're in a world of trouble then <laughs> what does um uh, you talked a little bit about it but what is being an archivist actually mean you know what's your what's your day-to-day -day like uh day-to-day -day i do you know licensing uh mm -hmm. you know there's still a lot of demand for uh the old material for yeah. different purposes you know somebody might be watching it you know in a movie they might be watching something on television and they want to see uh bob or they want to see you know barbara eaton we licensed to abc you know for a, a tv show and stuff the documentaries are always looking for old right. material you know, it, it's surprising how much uh, interest there still is in some of this. So, you know, I do the licensing because I know what we have. And sometimes they don't know what they want, but they know that they want something. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of copyright infringement that exists out there. Right. People, because it's old, they can use it. And that's not always the case. And sometimes they don't use it in a way that we would like it to be used. You know, like, I went and saw um, Rich Little uh, uh, last fall in Vegas, and he was showing clips you know of, of his career over over time yeah. and stuff is that that type of thing would that be something that someone might reach out to you for uh footage that they could use in their act uh very likely yeah they very likely might because uh you know i'm certainly rich little had his own show there for mm -hmm. for some years and and he might own that yeah um, yeah he, he probably own, did he probably did he doesn't own, you know if he was on a bob hope show he doesn't own that if he was on the tonight show he doesn't own that so you know then you have to go out and you have to license it and make it make an agreement for that yeah i think that's interesting because most of us never think of that stuff because it's like you said you know if we if it's older we probably just look it up online and use it yeah and that's not that's not the way you should do it <laughs> that's, that's not the way it works uh, you know i mean yeah you think it's fair game and you got to go back a long way you know to find stuff that is fair game you, right. you can pull stuff from the 20s yeah. <laughs> you know, but you, you start you start looking at the 40s or 50s and, and so forth you know that you know that stuff is still owned by somebody that's right that's right yeah just never never thought of that and and they would just is it just uh picking up the phone and giving you a call or sending you an email and then you'll you'll go and do the paperwork for it. Yeah, uh, that that's pretty much how it works. And you know, I, I've been doing it you know now for so long that everybody knows how to find me. Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> I have, I've never changed my phone number for, for that reason. It's I'm easy to find. Does it? Uh... You know, if I come and I, I, I'm like, this is the, I want this piece of material and you'd help me with that. Does that come with a time limit or is it just, you can use it as long as you it need can. to? It can, it, it, you know, it, it depends on, on what rights they're looking for. Yeah. You know, is it just the free TV? Is it, you know, is it pay TV? Is it worldwide? Is it North America? Is it three years? Is it in perpetuity? You know, 
you can you can you know, carve it up a lot of different ways and so you know it's, it's the price will change depending on you know, how big and long the rates become yeah yeah do you have i know we need to to wrap up jim but do you have a favorite uh bob hope story or interaction something that uh kind of sticks with you well you know i i always give this example just at how quick he was and yeah. what his personality was uh sometimes not often but sometimes if you're on location doing a show outside somewhere and you're staying in a hotel occasionally breakfast would be in the restaurant rather than room service right and uh there was a waitress who was just so awestruck and so excited <laughs> that she was waiting on bob she was beside herself she she was just fawning all over him and oh you're just I'm such a fan and then so forth and took his breakfast order and disappeared I, uh, you know like I, i'm a ghost you know <laughs> Didn't acknowledge me, not a hello. You know. <laughs> so you didn't get any breakfast. So she brings uh she brings the breakfast in. And so I I pull the, the plate in, in the middle of the table and I dip the toast and break the yolk and so forth, but I'm helping myself to some of the sausage and I'm talking to him about you know the, the morning schedule and so forth. And he looks at me and he looks at her and he says, I'll have what he's having. <laughs> That's pretty good. Didn't get mad. You know. I just yeah. Well, I could see that, that if you're that if you're a, up, though, you yeah know. if you're a waitress, I could see where you might get overwhelmed if if uh, you had a big star at your table, especially somebody that you were a fan of. That might yeah. rattle me too. Yeah, she didn't know me. She didn't know that I eat. How would she know? She, you may have just been passing by, just happened to stop by the table. You may not have wanted to eat anything. Yeah, maybe I'm the food taster. Who knows? I need a whole breakfast for that. It, it it amuses me that you pulled the plate into the center of the table. <laughs> that's after a that, that's after a few years, Mike. You don't do that right away. Well, that's right. You were comfortable at that time. Yeah, <laughs> he knew me pretty well by that. Yeah, yeah. Was, I didn't do that during that first summer. <laughs> well you got to get a permanent position before you can you know make those type of moves <laughs> so i'll just have water <laughs> it's fine <laughs> yeah, don't mind me well jim thank you for taking a little bit of time so the uh the the youtube channel is the bob hope channel it comes right up if you put in bob hope that's what comes up so yep. congratulations on getting that uh, uh started um, before I let you let you go, anything else that you're working on for for the future, and you know where can we find you on uh, social media? Well, I, um, I'm not on social media myself. Nobody would want to find me anyway. But <laughs> the, the Bob Hope Foundation, you know, has has a website that yeah. and, and that's the beneficiary of anything that we that we earn anywhere. It goes into the foundation, yeah. which does great work for veterans and and you know people who have fallen on hard times so um, um other than that there's a, a documentary that's that's uh, being done about bob's world war ii uh experience oh, amazing and that'll be uh that should be out you know about a year from now probably memorial day next year and uh are you going to be in that documentary i actually have done an interview for that already oh, that's uh, great I, I will be in it. Yeah. Yeah. That's, this is a whole new, I'm launching a whole new career. <laughs> I'm going to be insufferable. Well, it it is true with that uh, channel and documentary coming out. You're probably as busy as you've been in a while. I, I've never done this kind of thing before, Mike. I got to yeah. tell you, you know, nobody that's ever, exciting. nobody ever asked for me. There were always better people to talk to. And, <laughs> you know, they're just not around anymore. So, Yeah. They're like, I guess we'll talk to Jim. <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean, you know, there's a reason you have so many arms in the bullpen. Once in a while, you got to, you know, you got to go to that last one. So, well, you got it. You've got your lower leverage relievers. You got to, you know, you got to have somebody to work those middle innings. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're down ten nothing. I just need some innings out of you. That's all. Now, nah, Jim, you've been terrific, and thanks for taking a little bit of uh, time. I, I love. Love that stuff. When um, 
when we first got cable, which would have been probably late 70s, you know, the only channel that really came with it was TBS. And at that time, I'm sure they were just looking for stuff to show. They showed a lot of that older stuff from the 50s and 60s. So I, that's when I really got interested uh, in, in, in was at that time. And it's, you know, it's become like a lifelong passion. It's probably part of the reason I'm podcasting right now. It's kind of my love of those uh, uh, older, you know, entertainers. So thank you for taking a little bit of time with me. It's been terrific. Mike, I really appreciate you having me on. Let me pitch the... Bob Hope YouTube channel a little bit. I certainly enjoyed our chat. A lot of fun. A lot of fun. Yes, sir. You'll have to come back and give us an update on how things are going at some point. You know, you know where I am now. <laughs> yes, I do. Yes, I do. Okay. Hold on one second, sir. I hope you enjoyed that one. Uh, Jim Hardy. He was terrific. What a great job. I mean, could you imagine taking a summer job in 1986? And over with Bob Hope, and over time, you end up being his official archivist. And 40 years later, you're still doing the job. It's just amazing. Amazing. That uh, for a, um, I, I'm a very routine guy. And, and I, I always t would say uh, growing up, if I could have a job where you just kind of did the same thing every day. You worked on something, you moved it to the left, and you come back the next day and you got a pile on the right again. I'd be happy. I could do that. Now, I've changed a little bit over, over time. Maybe I need a little more excitement. But that doesn't sound terrible. Well, Jim gets to do that, except the stuff that, that he's dealing with is all terrific. I Just wow. Uh, Hope, hope you really enjoyed that. Please, please, please check out uh, Bob Hope's official YouTube channel. You're going to have a blast. Make sure you got a little bit of time because there's so much good material. I would recommend the Mark Hamill, Olivia Newton, John uh, clip where they're doing a Star Wars parody. Hadn't seen that one in decades. Uh, it's just terrific. Those of you that are a fan of the show know that, you know, we were we were uh, working out a time for uh, Olivia to uh, to come on the uh, podcast um, and her health took a took a turn and we we never got to um, to see her. And that uh, probably my biggest regret of, of someone that, you know, we were supposed to supposed to talk to and didn't get to actually uh, speak with uh, did me some good seeing that one. I, I enjoyed that uh, was uh, it was nice seeing uh, Olivia in a uh, kind of a comedy setting that was that was pretty uh, pretty great hope you enjoyed that there's so much good material on there right now and they're adding to it daily so so definitely check that out bob hope youtube channel um if you're finding us for the first time thank you so much so happy that you're here you know we've uh, we've been doing this my son and i for about five and a half years we're closing in on our 800th episode pretty exciting um you can watch all of those or listen so you can get the audio and the video versions on our youtube channel or on our website meistercon.com you get audio and video um also let you know if we're doing anything in studio if we're going on location covering a convention all of that will be on the website meistercon.com so definitely check us out there our youtube channel is meistercon pod um if you go there please subscribe it's free but those subscription numbers really do help us out. IMDB named us a top 100 podcast. There's 15 million and growing podcasts out there to be named to a top 100 list is, is just amazing. We're so thankful for that. You know, we're a small town, West Virginia, father and son team trying to cover the entertainment business, not an easy task. The fact that, uh, the show is has taken off. Unbelievable. I, I'm so, so thankful, so grateful to um, to all of you. So thank you so much. If you want to support us that way, if you go to imdb.com and look up the Two Opinionated Podcast, just bringing the page up actually helps us, just that traffic on the page. So yeah, thank you so, so much. Until next time. Bye, everybody. Hi, everybody. I'm once again here to ask for your support. It's been a big year for the Two Opinionated Podcast. Back in February, we got to live out a dream, moderate for William Shatner here in our hometown.
in May, we passed 100,000 downloads on our YouTube channel. And we followed that up in June with 50,000 downloads on the audio side. We recently posted our 600th episode, which is pretty good volume for just a uh, father and son operation. You know, not too many podcasts can keep that volume up. We've been doing this now for four and a half years, 600 plus episodes. We recently hit 1,000 subscribers on our YouTube channel, which is a really big deal for us because we've always gotten the views, but have struggled to get people to subscribe. So that 1,000 was a big deal for us. And best of all, we were recently named one of the top podcasts on IMDb, which is the entertainment database. You know, those that are ahead of us, we came in at number 82. Those that are ahead of us are bigger companies like Disney, mostly Marvel, and Joe Rogan, that type of uh, podcast. So for us, being just a, a small West Virginia father and son podcast, to be in the top 100 out of 15 million, it's a pretty big deal for us. So thank you for everything you've done for us so far. Got a couple little ways, though, that you can help us, and they're free, and they're really easy. If you haven't checked out our YouTube channel yet, please go to YouTube. It's under MeisterCon Pod. Just hit subscribe. It's free. doesn't cost you anything. really helps us a ton. And maybe even more important, if you could go to IMDB, IMDB.com, look up the Two Opinionated Podcast, and just look around the page. Just having that traffic on the page really helps us out. So that's a couple easy ways that you can support us, even if you're not listening or watching all of the time. And we want you to listen and watch, because I think that our... Our guest list, I would put up against anybody, any other show, podcast, anybody out there. I think our guest list holds up. So please check us out. You you probably will find somebody that you like or maybe somebody that you didn't know you liked but kind of discovered them on there. There's tons of that. If you're into music, we have that too. If you like books, we've got authors on there if you if you're more into what goes on behind the scenes in the entertainment world you know we've got producers directors um video artists anything you can think of that happens behind the scenes we've had them on the show so definitely check us out thank you guys so so much until next time hi everybody